This behind me is my continuous plastic into fuel reactor. So let's go ahead and turn some plastic waste into fuel. Over an hour and a half in, let's check on everything. We got plastic continuously loading in, and of course, we have oils being produced from plastic waste before our eyes. Beautiful. Let's keep going. Almost two hours in. And I have this right here. This is the pressure of the continuous feed chamber. Everything is looking good. So about two hours in, we have over 100 PSI of the natural gas alternative spread out across all these tanks. I hope to be getting a few more of these tanks pretty soon. Other updates, let's take a look at the temperatures. We can see the machine is operating very hot. I do want to remind everybody watching right now that these temperatures are merely the external body temperatures, meaning the probe is on the belly on the outside of the machine, while microwaves are actually heating up the plastic within on the inside of the machine. So the actual surface level temperature of the plastic is much, much higher than what we see. But nonetheless, this is still pretty hot. This is about what an average oven we work at and we want the whole body to just be ambiently hot because as new plastic is being loaded in that allows that new plastic to uh, absorb more microwaves hotter things absorb microwaves better and it also helps it break down quicker of course which will cause it to break down into carbon and carbon absorbs microwaves crazy and creates a ton of thermal energy and infrared energy and that will help it break down more plastic it kind of becomes a self-feeding cycle uh, taking a look at what we got here Oh, we can see, oh, this machine's toasty. I can feel it, just the, the radiating heat, just zoom, 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 fuming at me. These pipes are getting uh, quite warm. Uh, that's good, these are our condenser pipes. Some of our condensers, our first line of condensers, this is just air cool. Consistent oil flow, love to see it. And um, you also have to add, remember guys, a condenser is anything that is below the temperature of the vapors. So all of this is a condenser, this is a condenser, and of course, all of these are condensers. These are our only water-cooled condensers. And now, obviously, you can tell, look at all the condensation, it's quite cold. So we have this big eight inch by a 36 inch tower here. And then we have 40 foot of coiled stainless steel tube that is jacketed with cold water running through it. So both of these will capture the final uh, bits of oil and moisture in those vapors. 
that don't get caught through all of this, okay? And then those vapors are then going to be plumbed over to our pump, which is out there because it's so loud. And then it gets uh, that that pump compresses the, the rest of those vapors, which are our natural gas alternatives. And you see this column here; it pushes them up under high pressure through this column. And this column is packed full of bentonite, full of alumina, full of activated carbon, full of silica. And all of those things are going to capture any last potential harmful um, long chain hydrocarbons like oils, uh, for example, it's going to capture all of that. And it's going to also dry it out completely. And then it goes into these tanks. So we hopefully have our dry natural gas product. And that dry natural gas product will be used to run and heat our distiller later to refine the crude oils that come out of this. The distiller right now is a little bit, and it needs to be put together. But <laughs> don't worry about that. Uh, everything is looking good. I'm about to load in some more plastic while it's running now. I would love to give a huge thank you to every single one of my Patreon members as well as my YouTube members. You guys help me so much. You make my project possible. And going on that point, if you would like to support what I do, I have recently launched my own natural products brand. It's called Jabaroma. You can go to Jabaroma.com and you can get yourself some 100% natural and handmade products. I make every single product, no parabens, no chemicals, 100% natural, good stuff for you. Our flagship product and our best selling product is our 100% all natural deodorant, free of all chemicals, no aluminum, literally just four ingredients. Go to jabberoma.com and you can support this channel. 10% of all profits go to the reactor itself. And lastly, come next month, very soon, I'm going to be having a meet and greet in Texas. In Austin, Texas, it'll be a live meet and greet, a car meet, and I'll be doing a live fuel test on a modern vehicle and you'll be able to be there and see it in the flesh. You can go to naturejab.com slash meet to sign up for that. So I'll see you guys there. Thank you all for your support. And let's get back to the video. So we are four hours in, over 300 C here. And uh, everything is looking good. Unfortunately, I do have a clog in my continuous speed system. I'm gonna have to get that clog out before I can load more plastic in, but I will be doing that while the machine is so hot. But let's go ahead and spin these blades here. So four hours in and take a look at this. You can see the condensation happening on the glass. That's so cool to see. But with this operating continuously, the whole point and the biggest advantage to continuous operation is when it's already hot like this. You know, hours in. Because it doesn't have to get up to this temperature to turn the plastic into fuel. It's going to be doing it passively at all times. Because it's so hot, even if I turned off all the power, plastic would still be, to be uh, turned into fuel just off the ambient temperature. 300 C is over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's very, very hot, you know. The front is quite hot. Take a look at our tanks here. Almost 200 PSI of our natural gas alternative product amongst all these tanks. Looking great. Of course, great amount of fuel coming out. Pressure is looking pretty good. Negative 2 PSI, negative 1.2. And uh, these pipes are all starting to get warm. So let's fix this clog and load in some plastic. So unfortunately, it's clogged really bad. Look, the plastic isn't even moving forward. I think it's because it's just too big of plastic chunks that got sucked in here. And it's going to take the disassembly of this to get this fixed, which I just am not going to do right now. Guys, help me think of solutions. I'm thinking I can possibly change where the vacuum initially goes in. Maybe it can come in over here. It's, so this is where the suction is on this end and the plastic is actually loaded in on this end. And then if that's the case, then maybe it won't do that. But also, of course, I was putting pretty big bits of plastic in. This shredder does not shred as fine as my last one. And I'm sure that's a part of the issue here. We do see some things falling here every now and then, but I certainly can't load in any more over there, which kind of defeats the whole point. And this really sucks because the machine is really hot. These are the perfect conditions. You can actually see the temperature has dropped, uh, moving more towards the front um, because all the plastic that was in the back is now carbon and heated up and expelled. 
and now it's pretty much to the front. Every now and then we do see some plastic falling in here, but unfortunately it's just a little too little too late. So, got to figure something out. It won't be this though. Also, of course, the blades inside of this chamber were handmade, so that's probably an issue too. But that's going to be very expensive to fix, and I do want to do it, but I just can't do it right now.